We want to do loudspeakers first. Should yeah, let's ahead. talk about the gear now that we've heard it. And a few of my friends have said this is their favorite system so far, so that's good to know. Sure. Uh, but let's learn a little bit more because this is a kind of innovative design and a departure from your other Well, correct. It, it shares some things in common, which is the device that's here. There's three of them, and that we use to get the broad bandwidth crossing over here at 300 hertz. Okay. Um, it's got very good uh, horizontal dispersion, very efficient, and so forth. Here we've coupled it up below 300 hertz to a 12-inch transmission line, so it makes a really nice package with very good bass, um, can play loud or soft depending on what you need in your room. Here we're driving it with a single-ended triode, so you know that uh, it's, it's pretty efficient. Um, what else do I want to say about it? Uh, the side uh, venting of it? Yes, it always confuses people. Um, yes. but. Basically, we believe that our devices work best as a dipole. Okay. So the upper elements, it's hard in a cabinet like this, you have to have a continuous uh, device for the woofer. But here, this basically allows the cabinet to resonate out here and just get rid of some of that back pressure, um, allowing a dipole operation. Interesting. The okay. reason they're here, instead of back here where you'd expect to see them, is this is a relatively small cabinet to put a quarter wave 12 inch line in. Try and transmission line, yeah. yeah. So this is unique in that there's a 16 inch diameter tube okay. that runs top to bottom at the back. So there's no room to go through this way. Gotcha. And what happens is that the woofer goes into that on the side and the, cat and the tube is divided in half. Well, Technically, it's divided about 60-40, okay? And the woofer fires in and goes up, and then there's a cutout, and it goes across and back down and out the front. So a single tube does two things, and it allows the cabinet to be uh, much smaller than you'd expect. But uh, that's why you have to side vent. Correct. Okay. You know, normally you just like on our larger speakers shown over here, yeah. the, the upper element is just has a big round thing and is open at the back and the woofer is also open. That's a dipole right. complete. This one is uh, got to have a cabinet for the base driver. And it's vented on both sides, the interior Correct. of the cabinet. Correct. And this the is just opening up this area so that we okay. can let the, let the uh, back pressure out a little bit. Um, it has so obviously they're very efficient dr being yes. driven. The woofer is not powered, or is it? No, it is it's powered. Not powered. So this that's great. Yeah, straight, and uh, it's as I said, an eight ohm device, and it drops down to seven and a half. So this is a really well controlled device. I mean, it, it is very easy to drive. I think you said the you put the sensitivity around ninety one or ninety two. Ninety two uh -huh. with this speaker. Yeah, very um, good. And there's there's something I was going to say that I have now forgotten. What about finishes? Sorry, the finishes are variable, or, or this is. This? I mean, certainly they're they're variable. We're hmm. sort of bespoke with this. We're not making. Okay. You know, so, typically we have in the, the, the light ash type device or walnut or whatever. There are standard veneers. So okay. This is twenty five thousand with standard veneers. And with this type of veneer, these are quite a bit more expensive, so it would be about 29 with these veneers. Okay, yeah, it catches the light really nice, so. Yeah, and the thing is, it, this is also, it's finished differently than many speakers are, in that many uh, people use either polyester or something that's very quite thick. This is, this is done with shellac. Mm. So this is a, a sprayed with shellac two or three times, and then it's rubbed down, and then it's scraped, and then it's waxed. Okay. So it's it, it's it's kind of real real wood that you can actually see and touch. Mm -hmm. The other thing is it's easy to repair. If anything happened to it, it's relatively easy to repair. So, you know, we're trying to be safe, and of course, shellac is also not as big a problem with the environment. And how about weight wise? This speaker, I think, is right around 118. Okay, not that heavy. So it's, yeah. it's, it's movable, it's, mm -hmm. it's hardly light, but it's... You can get it upstairs if you need to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. Yes, you can. You might need some help. I will need a lot of help, yes. It will. Hey, I, That's I, why I wait for you to come visit I, me and I help me. I will, too. I'm at an age now where I need help. Crowdsource all my subscribers like I've started to do with yeah, exactly. Ghost, which the biggest help on this Ghost of Johnny Cash has been Steve. 
Yeah. We've got a lot more coming on that front. And you got my note on that. I uh, on the Vocaloid yes. program. Sure. That it does it does the have the ability the ability to do that. So I'm suspecting more and more that that's how that we're going to have a lot. I don't want to spoil it, but in fact, we're still learning. So, yes, yeah. we don't want to say anything more until we find out for sure. That, that's great. Um, there's probably more I could tell you, but I don't think for this overview that you yeah, probably that's, need to know that. That's good to know. Easy to yeah. drive, broad bandwidth, any yes. amp, good. Okay. I mean, any amp, I would like this amp, but unfortunately, if I take it home with me, someone will come. Mm, yeah. Yes, exactly. And then uh, you have uh, more information on your web website. Yes, sure. more information on the website. We're updating the website, Absolutely. and uh, yeah. so we're, we're getting all of that in order. And okay. There we go. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about now. I have a video. It's probably titled, uh, You Never See This Gear. <laughs> it was featuring uh, Hi-Fi One. Hi-Fi One, Rick yeah. Brown, and you were also... Because you were instrumental in working with David Burning on some of the parts of this. Yeah, when I got involved with um, Rick Brown at Hi-Fi One, he was um, he and David Burning had gotten it together to create a new uh, push-pull amplifier using David Burning's design. Uh, but that was commissioned by Rick for Hi-Fi One exclusively. So they had started making that. Um, but um, when I got involved with Rick, um, he asked me to help apply some of my expertise to the chassis design and the physical aspects of it, which I was happy to do. And so I, I redesigned the, the second run of the push-pull monoblocks. Then we've gotten to now where we're doing the single-ended triode version. Um, so this is the extension of the thinking kind of into its most pure form, I suppose you might say, with the, the single-ended Triode. This still uses uh, David Burning's proprietary ZOTL technology. Um, this design requires the use of a very large inductor as part of the output stage. Uh, I'm not going to try to go into the whys and wherefores of that. You can take that up with David Burning. But right. this uh, smaller chassis off to the side. The Epsilon. The, it has a custom Huge inductor strategy. done by Ypsilon in Greece that is a pure silver wound inductor. That little box right there weighs about 45 pounds. And just to have a pure silver that's transformer, that's that's you're talking thing. about this is probably more expensive than most gear here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and just precious by, metals. <laughs> by far. Yes. And we're using um, LROG 845 tubes, so a custom built. Even the tube sockets, you were telling me y'all redesigned these. Yes. Very yeah, high I mean, end. I Watch my video, that. you'll get a close up of the tube sockets. Mm -hmm. A lot of amps, especially nowadays, are going for exotic chassis, exotic exteriors, but under the hood, not that much innovative. Um, we're talking about here, under the hood, pure silver transformers, even the inductor. tube socket, yeah, inductor. And then the. Uh, the, the uh, tube sockets, it's everything a, under the hood. A very, it's a custom made Teflon, uh, very, you know, it's a large Teflon base um, with the um, special uh, sockets for the actual, for the tube. You can put a 7, um, uh, 7-Eleven, am I saying that right? Um, 845 7-Eleven, I think. You can, but we're, We've chosen the 845 as the preferred tube, but it will work with um, a couple of other tubes. And even your gravity base is yes, that's incorporated, incorporated with some this. panda holds. And, yep. Yep. Okay. So a lot you don't see under the hood. Right. Um, you don't see fancy heat sinks, but trust me, under the hood, you're talking about as high end as it gets. And let's talk about your piece, is okay, exclusively so your piece. This is the um, my VRE2 silver reference preamp. So th this is the the evolution of the VRE-1, which was originally done in a um, Corian um, single mm -hmm. solid surface material. Um, but once I once I got um, into Panzerholz and uh, discovered what I thought were useful properties from that, I wanted to incorporate that into my electronics. I looked into doing the entire chassis out of Panzerholz, but ultimately refined that to where the, the interior base of this is a complex sandwich uh, made of stainless steel, Panzerholz, and carbon fiber. Hmm. 
and uh, that actually takes up quite a lot of room at the bottom interior and that gives me the structural integrity the the uh, solid foundation for the whole thing that's true in the power supply as well yeah separate power supply almost yeah, the same size yeah. chassis almost so i'm sure that's not cheap either <laughs> uh no yeah uh, this the this is the version that's exclusively for hi Fi one uh, there is quite a lot of silver content mm -hmm. uh, both in the transformers, the wiring capacitors, um, and um, hence the, the silver uh, reference. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, actually, we have one of my, in fact, after we do this video, we need to call one of my subscribers who wants to do a custom project ah, with okay. you. Um, Doug has done one. Yeah. Um, so even though this one's done specifically for Hi Fi One, you can do custom projects yeah. uh, to meet different budget. Correct. Where you might have to scale back certain silver yeah, and pressure metal, we're, but we're scaling up for, uh, yeah, for, for Hi-Fi Hi One. This is cost no object, yeah, best exactly. of the best. Goes into the most state of the art systems. Also, um, your oh, your that's UFO. My, I call that the UFO just because just because okay. um, that's a Panzerholtz disc with uh, still points. Although you you can use other uh, types of uh, footer devices in it. Um, and it's um, it's programmable in the sense I don't know if you can really see this, but yeah, there's, put there's a, a matrix of holes, and you can move the uh, footers around. Very helpful to yeah. match for the com the components that you're using. And one of the things I really like about it, I, I like the performance sonically, but also it's all in one thing, so you can it's easier to work with often than, actual, than individual. Exactly. Things. Yeah. Uh, so it's um, it's a separate performance platform that you can you put under your piece of gear you can change the pattern of the footers to match as might be required and what's the price point on those um the <laughs> you think I is it know one that. or two million um, is it? That, i have different two different sizes okay um and uh i think it it depends on the footers that you the still point select. Footers, okay. yeah and because it, it can be still points it can be rebel pods it can be a few other things so the price is very somewhat but um uh, i think this configuration is at 900 dollars. yeah really good and yeah if you want to get in touch with steve he's got a, a website his old dot com yeah, it's gone. so but we got, so, we got the dot net dot now net. And then he's also in my membership group in the WhatsApp if you ever want to have direct access to him as well. Yep. And email yeah. through me, I can get you in contact yeah. with him. Like we said, we're calling one guy after this. So, yeah, this is, uh, and then they got M Labs. Yeah, this is their high end uh, DAC DA2 with, I guess, streaming capability, et cetera. It's got, you know, all the bells and whistles. Um, I'm sorry, Rick isn't here to give you more information about this. Um, I only know that uh, it sounds quite good and works very well, but I don't really know a whole lot more. Gotcha. Yeah, I know it's, it's been around it has forever. Very wide range of capability in terms of um, input source types. And they're big and, believers in DSD. Yeah. And this is a wool server, pretty standard. They've been around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it does all the streaming. And maybe we're going to even play some tracks that uh, I had on my USB stick. Uh, if you've got that handy, I can swap it out it's for a, mine. And, it's uh, already done. Oh, okay. it's in there? So it's let not me... in there. I loaded all the okay, stuff. Cool. Oh, okay, cool. So all let's right. go ahead and start doing some listening. So, uh, But thank you for the walkthrough. Select. Thank you. All right.